I'm glad, I'm glad the previous speakers uh, were short so I can have a couple of extra minutes because you gave me a very big assignment, all the environmental regulations, which, as you know, uh, they are being formed at IMO. Two committees, uh, now the HAT committee is the MEPC, Marine Environment Protection Committee, which makes all those uh, environmental regulations. My presentation may be a little controversial because uh, uh, I'll, I'll be discussing things that uh, more and more people start to realize, but so far nobody likes to speak about. So the IMO makes those environmental regulations uh, one piece at a time, looking at one issue at a time. And uh, that results sometimes in some regulations having conflicting uh, effects with other environmental issues. The pressure at IMO to do something fast is high. And as a result, the regulation may come before technology is ready, like the ballast water uh, treatment units, or without enough scientific justification for the effectiveness of the regulation. Again, the example of ballast water treatment. Or by oversimplifying the problem, like in my opinion, easy EDI and EOI. But this is not 100% IMO's fault, because the members of IMO are pressuring IMO, and they say, regulate, because if you don't, we will. So those are the issues that IMO has regulated on, and I'll be talking about. And let's start with SOX. The ECAS um, that were talked about before um, will come down to a limit of 0.1% sulfur from next year with an intention for a global ECA, the whole, uh, all the seas, uh, uh, for fuel uh, to be used to contain only half a percent of sulfur from 2020. Now, science tells us that SOX actually uh, warms the atmosphere. Reducing SOX warms the atmosphere. SOX cools the atmosphere. And this is, this is an article from a scientific magazine. Actually, um, yeah, I went back. Uh, written by eminent scientists, not some nutcases. Uh, two of these scientists have actually been involved in IMO studies who say that, that um, sulfur dioxide cools the atmosphere and that if we enact these SOX regulations that we are about to enact, then from a general cooling that the Earth, the atmosphere now uh, is under, um, it, will, uh, it will be a general warming much earlier than before, after 70 years instead of after 350 years. Also, science is telling us that SOX increases weather severity. The UK Meteorological Office says, because we are reducing sulfur aerosols over the Atlantic, the water in the Atlantic gets warmer, and that creates bigger hurricanes and droughts. And of course, to create the low sulfur fuel that we're going to need, you need to emit more CO2. The uh, International Petroleum Institute has made, has made the submission to IMO saying that in order for us to comply with a demand that you are going to have in the future, we need to increase our CO2 emissions by 15% from the refineries. However, we know that SOX is a health issue. It's not good to breathe, to breathe it, but it has a short lifetime. Therefore, in our sense and nonsense box, we can say that it makes sense to use low sulfur fuel near shores, near populated areas, but I can't see the sense of requiring low sulfur fuel in the middle of the Atlantic when you actually need it to cool the atmosphere. Moving into NOx, NOx destroys the methane in the atmosphere, and the methane is 25 times worse than CO2 in warming the atmosphere. So, also, if the SOX reduction causes some warming, there is a great fear that uh, uh, the warmer water of, uh, uh, over the uh, East Siberian Sea will unleash vast amounts of methane. 
Also, don't forget that to comply with the NOx reduced limits, the new type engines emit more CO2 in the atmosphere. So again, NOx being a health issue, the sense would be to require its reduction near ECAS, but to let it loose in the middle of the Atlantic. Ballast water treatment, a big subject. Ocean currents transport sea life. USA National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration describes that the little bacteria go everywhere. This is the main uh, global conveyor belt current, warm and cold. These are some of the surface currents. They go everywhere. And there are many, many, many more uh, currents. The Gulf Stream alone moves 150 SV, and the cold one, the Atlantic Circumpolar, moves 125 SV. One SV is one million cubic meters of water per second. So these currents transport something to the order of 10 to the 15 cubic meters of water per year, while at the same time the ballast amount of tankers and bulk carriers is about 4 billion cubic meters of water per year. In other words, a million times less than the sea currents. We know in the Mediterranean, for example, that we get a new fish species every 10 days. I don't know if we had any big problems about new species in the Mediterranean. I think the ballast water management system's uh, requirement is very costly, and the end result will be minimal. But we know that these uh, invasive species cause ecological and economic damage, and I put an asterisk over there because it's not all bad. Sometimes they, they are good. In other words, the zebra mussels uh, cleaned the Michigan Lake's water, which was polluted and muddy, because they filter the water. So now it's totally clear. So it's not all bad. In our sense and nonsense box, we should require cost-effective measures, as in my opinion was the ballast exchange, and we should not think that we can stop nature nor require machines that are, that they don't work so well, we might say. CO2. In order to regulate something, you need to know how much it is. So how much is CO2 is emitted from shipping? This is the updated IMO study. We look at fuel consumption, because fuel consumption times 3.16 gives you the CO2 each ton of fuel emits to the atmosphere. So the experts say 369 million tons. The International Energy Agency says 234, 247. That's a 50% difference. So in other words, we don't know how much CO2 is emitted from shipping. Can we estimate how much the CO2 will be in the future if we regulate or if we don't regulate? Again, the IMO study. There is two dotted lines. So they tell us it may be 0.6 billion by 2050, or it may be 7 plus billion. Thank you very much. An order of 10 difference. So we have no idea if we need to regulate or if we don't need to regulate CO2. That's what this tells me. So IMO has three types of measures in place. Technical, the EDI, which is more or less finished. Operational, which are finished, the SHEMP, uh, and so forth, but I put question mark because I don't think, I think they'll come back to it. And the reason I think they'll come back to it is because the big money is here and that's what they want. They, whose day is another, is another story, but, but talk to me in private uh, later on. Uh, I was surprised to see a submission by the World Bank, sister organization to the IMF to IMO, 
And in their submission, it tells IMO how good the ATS system is and why IMO should go ahead and apply it to ships. I looked to see how many other submissions the World Bank has done to IMO, and there wasn't any. This is the only one ever. So I think if you're going to regulate, you should go for a flat tax. It's easy, it's fair. The ship that burns a lot of fuel pays a lot of tax. It's effective because by increasing the tax, always we know there are specific formulas. You reduce demand and therefore you reduce CO2 emissions. And it's efficient, according to a study by the USA Congressional Budget Office, five to 16 times more efficient than ETS. But as we said, the system wants ETS. For ETS, you need two things. ETS, by the way, is emission trading systems. I'll explain those a little later. You need a baseline and you need a formula to categorize ships, which are the good ships uh, below the baseline and which are the bad ships. And it works like this. In order to be able to operate your ship, you need to spend some money to buy in the emission stock market allowances, permissions to emit CO2. Now, as time passes, the baseline drops. Therefore, even the good ships will need to go to the stock market to buy emission allowances. And of course, the bad ships will need a lot more money to buy those emission allowances. So those were articles I had collected about the EDI. They all said what a big problem it is. And I say, if we thought back then that the EDI is gonna be a problem, when they try to do this for operational, for the operation of ships, operational baselines and indices, I expect a mess uh, times 10 to the nth power. I wanna step back to some basics. Owners are not stupid. You don't have to put a regulation to tell them burn less fuel in your ship. They can do the calculations themselves. And the second basic issue is that ships are not refrigerators. You cannot rate ships like some companies do, like they are refrigerators. They don't work in fixed environments. They don't work in fixed RPM, constant load, etc. So things like EOI to raid ships don't make any sense to me. Because the ship is controlled by the market, whether you need to go to a ballast strip to pick up the cargo, which will mess up your EOI figure, owner, charterer, what speed to do. And also it is controlled by God, if you hit bad weather or not. The God Poseidon in our case here. So we said before, baseline and an index, the baseline will be dropping. And an analogy to explain to you what those things mean is that EU doesn't regulate cars. EU regulates the manufacturers of cars and they tell them the total models you produce, you have to comply with this figure. And maybe that's why Mercedes, for example, came up with a smart car because the average production of all models has to comply with a certain number. But they don't regulate the drivers, of course. They don't tell you, you know, every year you have to uh, uh, consume less gasoline. So what is being discussed, what the plan is at IMO and the EU MRV of Mrs. Skilagakis is like trying to ask drivers to reduce their fuel consumption every two to three years. So, sense and nonsense, Sense to me is a tax on bunkers, like we have tax on gasoline, everything else trying to grade the ships to require them to reduce their fuel consumption and to require companies to buy emission allowances is nonsense. And last word, according to Mr. Moruka, ICS chairman, the cost of these new regulations, ballast water treatment, NOx, SOx, and all that, without counting ETS, is 50 billion uh, every year for the next 10 years. So, thank you very much. Just made it.